So you're looking to buy a new gaming mouse. And maybe this is your first time buying one for yourself, or really just the first time you've decided to look at the specs instead of letting the price and the good looks guide your decision. There's no shame in this, we've all been there. But now that you're taking a closer look at the specs, there's one that just demands your attention over all the others the DPI. And at face value, this is a very confusing mouse specification to grasp. You've got gaming mice that have a DPI of 5,000 or even less, and then you've got some models with a DPI of 16,000. So what's a gamer to do in this situation? It's confusing. That's why in today's video we'll be unraveling exactly what DPI is, how it functions, and how important it is for gaming. So without any further ado, let's begin. As always, we'll start with the basics first. So let's talk about what DPI means. DPI is an acronym that stands for dots per inch. And in this context, each dot correlates to one pixel on the screen. So let's say you've got a 1080p monitor and a mouse with a DPI of 1000. If you were to move the mouse vertically by exactly one inch, the cursor would move up by 1000 pixels, which is pretty much the height of the display. If the mouse had a DPI of 2000, then you'd only have to move it up by half an inch for the cursor to travel the same distance. And with a DPI of 10,000, you would need to move the mouse by a mere one-tenth of an inch to have the cursor basically fly across the screen. You get the picture. Why it's not called pixels per inch instead of dots per inch is something we can't really answer. It would have likely made the spec more understandable. Perhaps that's not a good thing in the eyes of the manufacturers. Hm. We digress though. It is what it is, and now we all understand it. In any case, we can conclude that the DPI determines how sensitive the mouse sensor is. The higher the DPI, the more sensitive the mouse. However, it's paramount that you do not mistake sensitivity for accuracy. A high sensitivity mouse is not necessarily an accurate one, or even a quality one. So don't get fooled into thinking you've accidentally struck gold if you come across a cheap mouse with a ridiculously high DPI. Manufacturers love to flaunt the spec exactly because it's quantifiable. They might have an objectively unimpressive mouse, but if it costs the same as a competition and it has a higher DPI, an unsuspecting customer could easily mistake the higher DPI as an assurance of quality and purchase that mouse over a better model that costs roughly the same. Speaking of which, let's take a look at what kind of DPI you should be aiming for anyway. All gaming mice are produced with fairly high DPI ratings nowadays, but there are definitely some discrepancies here. And just because this isn't the be-all end-all spec that it's made out to look like, doesn't mean you should ignore it either. This begs the question, how high is high enough? And what's the minimum DPI you shouldn't go below? We'll answer the second question first, just because it's way more straightforward. The minimum DPI of your mouse should roughly correlate with the horizontal resolution of your display. This isn't an immutable law by any means, but it is a generally agreed upon rule of thumb. So if you still haven't discovered your own DPI preferences, this is a great place to start. Even the cheapest gaming mice nowadays come with a minimum DPI somewhere between 2400 and 3200. So this really shouldn't be an issue, considering most of us use 1080p or 1440p monitors for gaming. By this logic, however, even an 8000 DPI mouse could be seen as an overkill for a 4K monitor. So is there any point to these insanely high DPI specs of certain mice, like 14,000 or 16,000? Well, yes, but also no. It certainly serves as a marketing tool. Five-digit specs tend to have jaw-dropping effects on people who realize that they've been using a 2,000 or 3,000 DPI mouse all their life. But at the same time, it's not false advertising. These mice genuinely do pack that kind of heat. So if you think you can make good use of the higher DPI, go for it. Like we've said, DPI isn't something to judge a mouse by, but extra sensitivity can't hurt. Just remember that sensitive does not mean accurate. And even if the mouse is accurate, there's such a thing as being too sensitive. Although this will vary from individual to individual. Let's just say that we haven't really been able to aim with any semblance of accuracy using a mouse with a DPI of over 12,000. And this is by no means an understatement. 
In fact, everything over 10,000 makes every kill feel like a lucky accident. But then again, none of us here are actually professional gamers. What's great about gaming mice is that they all feature a button, usually above the scroll wheel, that can be used to adjust the DPI at any time. Affordable models usually have just a single button that can be used to cycle between a set number of sensitivity settings. But more expensive mice generally tend to have dedicated buttons for increasing and lowering the sensitivity, which is super handy in certain games. If you're playing an online shooter, for example, you can switch between high high sensitivity and low sensitivity settings depending on what type of weapon you use. You can keep the sensitivity high if you're blasting away with a rifle and lower it when you switch to a sniper, which requires a steadier and more accurate aim. So even if you get that new mouse with a DPI of 16,000 and you find this sensitivity impossible for the human hand to properly navigate, you can still use the mouse at your preferred sensitivity setting. More expensive models often even come with their own pieces of software that you can use to customize the DPI, usually in increments of 100, if you're not happy with the preset values. So really, there's no such thing as the highest recommended DPI. This will always come down to the games you play and your overall preferences. And that about does it for today's video. To reiterate, sensitivity does not equal accuracy or quality. If you only take one thing we've said in this video with you, we want it to be this one. The DPI is just one of the many specs you need to keep in mind when making your purchase. The sensor type, connection type, grip style, overall ergonomics, and number of programmable buttons should all play an equally important role when weighing the pros and cons of a gaming mouse. We've made plenty of mouse-related videos on this channel, and you can find the links to all of them down in the description. From a comprehensive guide that covers all aspects of the mouse, to more focused videos like this one where we go more in-depth. There's also a link to our buyer's guide for the best gaming mice currently on the market. So check that out if you think a short list of great models could help point you in the right direction. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you think your friends would also benefit from this info, help them out by sharing this video, either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, the best way to do so is by clicking on the bell icon so that you'll get a notification whenever a new one gets uploaded. We're constantly working on new content for you, so the next one should be right around the corner. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.